All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call this meeting to order at 7.07. .07. Can I get a roll call, please? Yep. Uh, Donald Woodworth. Here. Jack Sapia. Here. Paul LeCain. Here. Brianna Woodworth. Here. Tim McCormick. Here. Sean, Shauna Manthorn. She will be late. Katie Knudsen. Here. Kristen Savage. She will be late. Mark Sherwood. Yes. All right. And if everybody could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And then we need to approve our last minutes. Do we have any non-public minutes that we need to approve? We do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just an extra thing to shred over there, Brie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already getting a reputation over here. When everyone has a chance to read, uh, if you don't care, I would need a motion to approve the May 18th minutes. Make a motion to approve the non-public meetings. Of no, May no, we're 18th. doing the we're doing the regular meetings meetings first. Oh, and I'm they're on your laptop. Taking up time. I know. I know, I know. No, you're good. You're all right. <laughs> you can make that motion in just a second. <laughs> all right. Then I'll make a motion to accept the regular board meeting of May 18th, 2023. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mark. Any discussion on these minutes? Seeing that there is none, all those in favor? Opposed? And abstained. All right, those pass. And then if you would look at the non-public minutes, please. I'll also make a motion to accept the non-public session of May 18th, 2023. I will second. Motion is second by Bree. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed and abstained. All right. You could pass those back, please. <coughs> Thank you. Next, we have a student, staff, and family share, and I do believe that we come on up. Thank you very much for the opportunity. We've had a fantastic year in the music department this year, and I brought some officers from our ensembles just to kind of share the uh, the doings of the music department this year. We have Sophia Keo, Vice President of the Guitar Orchestra, Ali Henderson, President of the Orchestra, Isabella Fair, President of the Chorus, and Jackie Fuller, President of the Band. Welcome, ladies. Welcome. <laughs> So um, I was really proud of how, so for Allstate, that is what I'm going to be talking about. Um, I was just really proud about how our ensemble performed in it. We had seven kids be accepted in. It was really great. We took up about half the ensemble. And it was just a really great opportunity f to get to play with musicians that were all experienced and very talented. And of course, us as well. And just it was a very good opportunity to bond with each other and just get to play more difficult pieces. And yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the first thing I'll be talking about is Chamber Allstate. Orchestra had two members selected to go. Um, we spent a day at UNH preparing to perform the pieces and then there was a concert at the end of the festival. So our pieces were challenging and they were written by lesser known composers and the goal was to expose us to a new genre of music in a small orchestra setting. And we were conducted by Dr. David Upham, who is the Director of Orchestral Studies at UNH. It was a really amazing opportunity and I learned a lot from it. Um, next I'll be talking about the National Association for Music Education's All Eastern Conference. It's a music festival in Rochester, New York. 
Um, I attended along with some people from chorus, band, and guitar. Um, there were students from New England, um, other eastern states, Maryland, New York, New Jersey. It was an incredible opportunity to meet people from all over our section of the country. And I had an amazing conductor from the University of Buffalo, and I performed some of the hardest music I've ever played. <laughs> and then, yeah, it was amazing. And then um, lastly, I'll be talking about the Large Group Festival. So in March, the Chamber Orchestra attended the, um, the Large Group Festival at Bow High School and we prepared certain selected pieces and practiced sight reading, which is getting new music for the first time, looking it over, and then performing it immediately. So we were judged on um, sight reading a piece. Uh, we were given a score for that, and then we also performed our prepared pieces for four judges who gave us feedback, and we scored a four, which is the highest score possible. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Um, uh, for the chorus, this was one of our best years, and um, because of all the amazing experiences we participated in, which brought us closer together and helped us regain our momentum after the pandemic. Um, and at the large group festival, like Ali was saying, um, the chorus also attended, and we were able to grow a lot closer and share our passions for music with other students and with the adjudicators. Um, we were also able to watch other schools perform, which inspired us so much, and after a workshop we had with one of the judges, our choir has not sounded the same since in the most amazing way possible. And next, I'd like to discuss the Jazz Allstate Music Festival. Um, this is an audition festival for students in New Hampshire schools. Um, this year, we had about 10 people from chorus audition and ended up sending six people to the festival in the jazz choir and in the honors choir. And one member of our choir received the top score in the state for soprano and alto voice. And we also had one member from the band try out for chorus and got into the honors choir. Um, we were able to work with music professors on jazz music for three days with intermittent concerts, fun, and a performance at the end to show off what we'd been working on. It's truly an incredible experience that we all hold near and dear to our hearts. Um, and lastly, we have our music trip to Disney. Um, this was so much fun because we were really able to grow not just as individuals, but it was good as it was a good opportunity to mix and match our ensembles and make new friendships and really grow as a whole music department. And we're all stronger because of it. And the chorus was beyond thrilled to be able to perform on the waterside stage at Disney Springs. And although we were feeling a little faint from the heat, it was <laughs> something that we will never forget. And it was truly an amazing experience. Um, all right. So this year, uh, the band and the Timberlake Music Department as a whole have had a highly successful year filled with extremely special events. So this year... Um, Timberlane was able to send 17 members to the New Hampshire Music Educators Association's Jazz Allstate Festival in February, with 10 of these members participating in two of the jazz bands, and uh, three of these students were being th were top scorers on their instruments. Uh, this three-day festival weekend was uh, directed uh, direct for the past 23 years by our band director, Ken Clark, um, and students were able to uh, work with various highly respected jazz musicians from schools such as Worcester Polytechnic Institute and the University of Miami. Uh, next, in April, six select students, including myself, based on last year's exemplary jazz and classical Allstate scores, were able to attend the All Eastern Music Festival in Rochester, New York. This uh, four-day event allowed students to collaborate with musicians from 11 states and other territories in ensembles ranging from 20 to 200 students. These ensemble directors are highly esteemed, coming from schools like the Juilliard School, Syracuse University, and the University of Buffalo. This experience allowed for musicianship at one of the highest levels for high school musicians and life lifelong connections. Um, also, throughout April vacation, our performing ensembles were extremely fortunate to be able to travel to Walt Disney World and uh, perform on their property and spend the week in the parks. So after two days exploring various parks, the band was able to march in Mag Magic T Kingdom on Tuesday down Main Street, USA. This is uh, the first time this has occurred since 2017, and all students that were able to perform are extremely grateful for the opportunity. Uh, on Wednesday, the chorus and the orchestra were able to perform at Waterside Stage at Disney Springs, while the rest of the group was at Animal Kingdom, and then we traveled home on Thursday. This trip was an absolute dream for those able to attend, and was just overall the icing on the cake for the music department's extremely successful year for students in the Timberlane District to make music and connect with so many different people. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, and thank you for coming here today and speaking to us and telling us all about the good experiences that you all have gotten to do along with your other fellow musicians and singers and everything that you all have achieved. Does anybody here else have a comment or a question that they would like to ask them? Congratulations on your continued success and carrying on the proud tradition of Timberlake music. Uh, just to date that a little bit, uh, Kenny Clark was a student teacher when I made Jazz All State, so this is a tradition that has been going on Thank you for holding your heads high, right? Eyes with pride.
It shows your age, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to also just say congratulations, and we're so proud of you. You guys have worked so hard. It's, it's, uh, it's a, a tremendous program. It always has been. Um, it's great to see that it still is. Your leadership, I'm sure, has a lot to do with that. So thank you. Thank you for being here and for letting us know how it felt and, you know, how, how great you did. Jack? Yeah, the important part that I see coming out of this is you felt like you were part of a team, right? The, the performing arts department is one big team. You guys all work together, and these are going to be your friends for longer than you can imagine right now. Someday you'll, you'll have this color hair, and, and you'll know what I mean. But uh, <laughs> congratulations on doing a congratulations on doing a great job. And glad to hear Mark made all states at one point. <laughs> there, hey, go ahead. There's so much talk about goals and outcomes and achievement and all those things. Uh, what I hear all four of you talking about are two things, and uh, specifically, that's one about exposure to high levels of, of the material, right? And then be able to do that stuff. And the second thing I hear you talking about is connecting with other students who have that similar interest in high levels of exposure. And, and those that idea of connecting with other people that have that interest and doing it at such a high level, um, I think is just an example of what we can also do in our classrooms and all the ex opportunities and experiences that students have available for us. So Mr. Schweitz, thank you for bringing it before us. Um, and all these, all these experiences are good experiences and they're all, Carbon four individual pathways in front of us for where you ladies will head next. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Mr. Spice. Thank you. Do we have any delegates or individuals to speak? No. Nope. Oh. Do you? I Did sure you? would like to. Oh. They didn't. Could, okay. Could yeah. you fill out real quick? Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> so I have your name. I'm sorry. Oh, what, ma'am? I so. Okay. What do you need? District clerk? Yeah. Oh, she has to know who's, son, who's speaking. Is that what you're trying to say? No. Come here. I can't hear you. I'm like, what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> oh. So you guys have to do this so I can go. Oh. What do I need to do? Is it? Oh. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I get it now. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for the surprise. Oh, no, right? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, sure. Can this stay here until the rest of the members get here and we can get this to you? I don't know. Or is it just who's... Okay. Okay. Um, we do have one uh, speaker. It is it Vince Edwards? Yes. All right, Vince Edwards. Thank you. I'm going to be moving around while you talk, but go Yeah, ahead. that's, that's know, great. <laughs> so, hi, I'm Vince Edwards. Uh, I'm the father of Gavin Edwards. Um, thanks for letting me follow up behind those uh, students. <laughs> um, uh, it actually, it, it uh, gives me a little bit of, to speak to. Uh, these four young ladies that were here uh, were uh, accomplished students. And their accomplishments reflect uh, your actions here as a school board and, and the opportunities that are presented to them. Um, my son Gavin is a student at uh, GBEX, Great, uh, Great Bay Charter School over in Exeter. Um, he has been a challenging student uh, in his younger years uh, and I, I can't even tell you how I uh, ended up with him at Great Bay, but it has changed him. Uh, he has become an accomplished student, uh, a willing participant in his education, uh, which I never would have guessed. Uh, I, I'm blessed. So, He's been over at Great Bay for two years, uh, very successful, uh, an active, interactive student with his teachers, and um, I, I, could, I could bore you to tears with all of the things that he's accomplished over there. Um, this year, he learned of a, a class called pre-engineering, which is offered by uh, the SST uh, Seacoast School of Technology. Uh, for next year. He applied for that, uh, had to do some essays. I'm, I'm sure you all know the, pr uh, the process. Um, 
and he was accepted. Um, he's delighted. Um, last week, uh, I think it was Thursday, we received an email that his uh, acceptance had been rescinded because of, now, I don't know the process here, so I'm, I'm kind of like hoping you guys know what I'm talking about, but there was an out of district fee uh, or of some sort uh, that was declined from uh, from this, uh, I, I think it was this board, um, that there's an, a technical opportunity down in Salem that, that Timberlane uses, uh, and help me. Uh, I'm, I'm asking if there could be a reconsideration uh, for this out of district tuition. I, I, um, and, and I'm sorry, I didn't prepare anything. I didn't know I had the opportunity to speak. So uh, this is really off the cuff, but I'm appealing to each of you uh, to reconsider uh, covering the tuition for this uh, pre-engineering course and uh, or out of district uh, to it. I, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact term. Mm -hmm. um, but I trust that you are familiar with the, the process and, and uh, I would ask you to reconsider um, allowing Gavin to participate in this, uh, in this class. Uh, for him to want to participate in a class is, is really outstanding from my perspective. And I, I haven't the heart to tell him that he was, uh, he was removed from the, from the class. So um, I hope you guys have the time to, to talk it around, uh, talk it over, and uh, reconsider. Um, so that was really the reason we were here. I I emailed a few of you. I yes, uh, appreciate your response, and uh, uh, I appeal to your goodwill. So. Unfortunately, this is um, this is a time for delegates to be able to come talk to us. But we, as a board, we do not converse back and forth. So we. I understand. Okay, yep. I'm just letting you know that. But we have received your emails, um, and the administration will be talking about that. Great. That's yep. all I can ask. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. You're thank, thank you. you. Did a nice job. Thank you. All right. Um, next thing that we have to talk about, and I'm trying as hard as I can to get to you. I know. <laughs> um, is a student representative, our new student representative, your first meeting, Mr. Arman. So you have the floor, sir. Thank you. First meeting, so super excited to be here. Um, so we'll just dive right into it. Um, <laughs> Sandown Central School on June 2nd, Sandown PTA is sponsoring a family fun night from 5 to 7. The kindergarten students met at Sandown Central School. I'm um, sorry, they're participating in a move-up day to Sandown North on June 6th. On June 14th, Sandown Central students will celebrate the end of the year by hosting New Hampshire musician Steve Blunt at their school to perform. Danville Elementary on Wednesday, May 24th, So Rock Coalition for Healthy Youth visited first and second grade graders where they discussed the importance of self-care and had a special visit from a therapy dog named Jackson. On June 6th, Danville fifth graders will go on a field trip to Adventure Lore as an end of the year celebration. On June 13th, Danville students will participate in a school-wide field day filled with activities where they can showcase their cooperative spirit and teamwork. On June 13th, Danville will finish their year with a picnic followed by a kickball game on June 14th for students. <clears throat> Moving on to Sandown North, on May 11th, first grade parents were invited to see projects students were working on. For grades two, three, and four, parents visited projects today. Third and fourth graders performed a recorder concert this evening as well. In grade five, we'll host parents on June 8th for project viewing. On Friday, May 26th, Sandown North held our, their annual Memorial Day commemoration ceremony to honor those who sacrificed for our country. Students and staff dressed in red, white, and blue. At the ceremony, Sandown North's fourth and fifth graders chorus performed a rendition of the Lights of Freedom. The annual school scholastic book fair for Sandown North will be held this week, the week of June 5th. Fifth graders were invited by the middle school, were visited by the middle school assistant principal and school counselor on May 23rd. They introduced themselves, gave a brief overview of their routines at the middle school, and answered student questions to prepare for the move to middle school. On June 1st, fifth graders will visit the middle school for their move-up day and will also be receiving their Chromebooks for next year. Fifth graders will celebrate the end of the year at their with Sandown North. Um, with their annual fifth grade field day at Playmates on June 2nd. An end of the year celebration with pizza 
on June 13th, along with a fifth grade breakfast and recognition ceremony on the last day of school. Over the past few weeks, students at Atkinson Academy have gone on a few field trips. Second grade went on an Atkinson community field trip. Third grade participated in the Big Buddy Little Buddy program at the high school. And fifth grade visited the USS Constitution and Bunker Hill Monument Museums. There was a school-wide enrichment day where there were many STEM activities, including a cardboard arcade created by fifth grade students. Thank you to Mrs. Dulong and the Atkinson Academy's Unified Arts staff. On June 5th, grade five students will visit the middle school for move-up day. On June 7th, fifth graders will hike Mount Major, which is an Atkinson Academy tradition. The Atkinson Academy field day will be at Woodlock Park on June 14th. A special thanks to Academy staff from Principal Harris's for their hard work and dedication to student success. Pollard is preparing for the end of the year as well, participating in end of the year activities. The staff of Pollard wish the entire Timberland community a wonderful and safe summer vacation. At the middle school, sixth graders had to design an apparatus to hold an egg and they used a slingshot to launch the egg to see if it cracked or not. They could use any materials they needed. Students had a lot of fun with the science project. Seventh graders went on a field trip to Rocky Shores in Newcastle, New Hampshire last week. They enjoyed exploring the natural environment and seeing ocean life in their natural habitat. <clears throat> Seventh grade students picked a problem in the world they researched and tried to find a solution to. This is called the MAD project, Make a Difference. They presented their research and solutions to invited guests that included staff and students. Eighth graders at the middle school are preparing for many fun activities coming up to end their middle school career. This includes field day, the eighth grade dance, and the eighth grade celebration coming up. At the high school, on Tuesday, May 16th at 7.30, the high school chorus had their final performance in the Performing Arts Center. On Wednesday, May 17th at 6 p.m., the high school orchestra had their final performance of the year, followed by the band at 7.30. Prom was on May 19th at 6 p.m. at the Ekinson Country Club. Starting with the walk and then continuing into festivities, it was a great success. The marching band marched in Plasto and Atkinson on Memorial Day at 2 p.m. Boys and girls lacrosse, softball, tennis, and our volleyball team made playoffs recently. Congratulations to the teams representing the high school. Senior exams are now underway. They started today. Good luck to everyone. Senior breakfast will be on Saturday, June 6th at 9 a.m. Graduation will be June 10th, starting at 10 and ending at 12 on the football field. Underclassmen exams will be from the 12th to the 15th. The last day of school will be at 11 a.m. I mean, excuse me, the day will end at 11 a.m. <laughs> during this time frame. <laughs> Thank you, and that's all I have. Good job. Thanks Thank you. <laughs> all right, now to current business. Uh, request for special meeting. Justin. Yep, uh, just a quick note to the board that we've been advised uh, by our bond attorney uh, to hold a special meeting. Uh, that is to cure a warrant posting procedural defect and that will assist us on uh, continuing to secure, uh, secure financing. Thank you. Do, do I have a motion? <clears throat> I would like to move that the vote entitled vote to hold public hearing call and approve the warrant for special district meeting to cure warrant posting procedural defect be approved in form presented to this meeting. I have a motion to have a second? Second it. Second it by Jack. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? <clears throat> and abstained. Thank you. We signed it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going as quick as I could. That was why. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Next is the Envirathon High School International Travel. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I come before you to ask the board to uh, approve a trip. Um, and per policy, it's a trip that's an overnight trip and an international trip, so it needs board approval. But first, I'd like to take the opportunity um, to congratulate the high school Envirothon team. Um, it's connected to this trip. Um, the high school Envirothon team uh, won states, uh, and they are therefore representing New Hampshire in the national competition. Um, so I'd like to thank Dr. Joy uh, Fraga Muller uh, and Kim Workinger as the coaches. Thank, thank the entire uh, high school science department because they all had a part in getting these kids prepared. Um, team captain, yeah. uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself and, and just 
say a little bit and maybe introduce the other members of the team? Yeah, um, my name is Emma Sharp. I'm the team captain of Envirothon. It's a competition, a science competition of environmental science. It major focuses on five different events, forestry, soils, aquatic ecology, wildlife, and current issues, which this year is climate change. Um, the rest of my team was Cole Abel, Adrian Garrett, Ben Winters, and Annabella LaFond. And so first, I'd just like to congratulate them for winning states. Yes, congratulations. And so the second part of this is to seek your approval. Uh, in your packets, you should have a, an executive summary, uh, information about the trip, uh, and then information from uh, the National Envirothon uh, competition with more details about the trip. Um, and that is taking place in July, uh, July 23rd through the 29th. And yes, I know the national competition is in, in Canada. Um, <laughs> it, it is for the nationals. Uh, I am hopeful that, that you know, we, after uh, that trip, you know, these students can come back and be recognized as national winners. That's my goal. <laughs> well, I saw, <laughs> saw all the paperwork there and I read about all the things you guys can do when you're there. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's so it's a, fun. It sounds yeah. amazing. It should have been in Bozeman. Such a, such a <laughs> learning, you know, another learning experience. You go there and be exposed <clears> to you know, great research and great opportunities. And yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. I, I, I all support it, but, but back to that trip happening. Sounds like an amazing opportunity. So, well earned. So in, in a second, I'll make a motion to approve the trip. But I just want to say that my daughter was an environmental science major. Oh, she's sorry. getting her master's at Harvard. She's got a great It's a great avenue and a great uh, major to take because there's all kinds of opportunity out there in the real world for it. So congratulations. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the trip. Second. So that motion a second. Bree, did you have a comment? I just had a quick question. I'm just a little bit in the news. Wildfires in Canada, they don't affect this trip at all, right? It's going to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think this is, I don't think this is near the area, but just making sure. There are, in Nova Scotia area, there are some, that, and Dr. Joy is on top of it. <laughs> We're going to make sure the kids are safe. Okay, the smoke's all coming this way. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> That's their project. They're going to put them out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Anybody have any other discussion? There's been a motion and a second. All those in favor? Oppose? And abstained. Congratulations. Enjoy your trip. Thank you so much. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I think I'm the, the next agenda item. So yeah, I'll so just stay. Okay. So go ahead. Take it on. It's a second read. Go ahead. Uh, so I came to you at the last board with a uh, first read of curriculum changes to a high school uh, course. Um, the curriculum documents, I know I made copies and ran them down. Hopefully you all got those. We appreciate um, it. <laughs> <laughs> so here to answer any questions that you might have, or uh, but ultimately we are seeking a uh, motion and approval of those curriculum documents. Go ahead, Don. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for all the work and getting that done in such, you know, completion. There's a lot of detail there about, you know, how deep that course can go. And, and the challenges that students will have in yeah. terms of you know, appropriate writing for various situations and you know all the skills that they'll learn. So good job with the course. Um, I move that we accept uh, this as a second read and we approve it. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Kim. Jack, did you have a question? No. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Shauna, are you in favor? I didn't listen. So. Okay. <laughs> She's going to abstain. <laughs> I didn't Matt, you can't leave. I that is an honest I, board member. Yeah. I know. I'm calling you out. you got to sit. Sorry. You can't leave. <laughs> Sorry. I know. You can't leave. You can in a minute, but not yet. <laughs> all right. There was a motion and a second. So, again, so all those in favor, it was everybody but Shauna opposed, and then Shauna's going to abstain. Before, thank you. Thank you. Was there anything? Uh, just down to your point, a lot of teachers uh, helped with this. You know, great English department, and Jen Popek did a lot of work. Did so I just wouldn't be remiss if I didn't thank her and the English teacher. Oh, so. Yeah, he was yeah. Leave, so, he so before we move on to our next agenda item, Matt, the reason you could not leave. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to come on up here, but Kristen, I'll let you take it away. Do you want to 
There, I'll come over to you. Why don't you go to him? I'll come to you, Ma. So. <laughs> I'm like being put on the spot the second I walk through the door. Well, it's a final spring. 17 to 2. Beautiful. 17 to 2? 17 to 3? 6. 17 to 6. Classy coach. Huh? Classy coach. Classy coach. There you go. Hi, Matt. Hi. Hi. <laughs> all right, I'm sitting down for a second. <laughs> so, we just all wanted to thank you for all of your time spent on this board. Um, Want to send you off to Plymouth Station style. Um, <laughs> also with a couple of things that every college student needs, you know, DoorDash, Amazon, <laughs> things like that, fun stuff. Um, but also with a lesson and something to remember to million by. So when you first came to the board, your first board meeting, I think it's fair to say you were really nervous. <laughs> and, pro and probably it got a little better every meeting, but there was still that level of it. And then you brought it up, um, you know, the last time Project Hope. So, and I think that was a great memory for you. I think that was a great thing. But the day before the Project Hope meeting, you sat here and you were really nervous and you were stressed and you had a lot on your mind. Um, and we talked to you. We gave you a little bit of encouragement. You went out. You killed it. And I think it was probably one of your best nights and best memories from Timberlake. Yeah. So, there. so um, we just wanted to send you off with a reminder and a lesson from us that one, you have a whole group of people behind you that are always here for you. We'll always support you. So if you ever need anything. When you're at Plymouth State, you can always reach back out to us. But also, no matter how tough things get, you can always overcome them. It doesn't matter how nervous you are or if something gets tough. Just just be you. So I want you to open your gift, though, right now. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to open up the card? You can open the card later. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> get to the good stuff. Then very nice. Okay. Oh. oh, good. I need one of... Oh. <laughs> Old. You look old. <laughs> <laughs> I really look like that. You really look like that. That is you on your. Yeah. It's also a profile edge. Point. Give yourself some break. <laughs> you have to tell everyone what it says. Yeah. If things get tough, just strut. <laughs> Very true, though, I must say. Mm -hmm. I want to show. Oh, good. I'm going to wear this to orientation. Do you see this? On the board. Oh. And it's your favorite color, right? It is. Pass it around the mat. You can it wash is. that later. So, but that's all. So I'm sure. sorry I made you wait, but oh, so. I was at the lacrosse game and I apparently lost track of the score. So, <laughs> best Thank of luck, you. buddy. Thank you, man. Thanks, man. We'll give your cup back to you in a second. <laughs> Thanks, and Matt. Wait, Matt, you can't leave your cup, man. I know. That's off. So, so be nice and never forget. So, <laughs> That's cool. literally. So, but it's what every college kid needs: the giant Yeti. So, good luck, little kiddo. Take care. Bye, Matt. Bye. Bye, Matt. All right. Sorry for that interruption, but I know he was really wanting to leave, so. <laughs> Next thing on the agenda is the tennis court requests. And thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm not sure if people are aware, but girls lacrosse lost the tough one. 13 to 9 today at Winnicott. We are so proud of them as well. Uh, great game. Came back, uh, took an 8-7 lead, so it was really good. This is the first playoff uh, experience for the girls, uh, and they won their first game. So just wanted to give them a plug as well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you know, but thank you. So I believe uh, in terms of the tennis courts, I think you have a little bit of an executive summary mm -hmm. um, and some descriptions of the state of those tennis courts. Um, all four of the courts have significant cracking uh, on them. Um, so we are hoping that we could um, secure some funding to to fully repair those tennis courts. Um, and it looks like, because we had asked before about looking for grants, and it looks like in your executive summary that currently there is not a grant that we could. So um, we have reached out this week, uh, and I reached out to uh, Mr. Bill Gagas, who is, is New Hampshire Land and Conservation. Uh, and I have for you to sign a an intent, if, if you choose to, 
uh, an intent to write an addendum um, to the grant for the track. Um, but it's important to note that it will go through the the entire process um, with, as, as he put it, no guarantees uh, of anything um, additional for, for tennis courts. But uh, we would not get an answer about that until June or July of next year. Uh, so it would go through the whole process. Just so that, just because it'll fall out of my head, just so that you know, um, when I made that phone call, um, there is due tomorrow an intent um, to write an addendum. There's a, there's a form and they ask for certain things. Um, so just to be cautious, I have completed the form and um, Mr. Krieger will have that. He has it on his desk. Kristen. One of the questions I had asked at the last meeting to have for this meeting was, and I know you have Cape Island Track and Tennis was contacted. There aren't many organizations that do this. So did we find out from them? I mean, if, if we approve this tonight without the grant, do we find out, I mean, when could they do it? Are we looking at next summer? So doing the grant wouldn't? I think, I think. Carl. <clears throat> I mean, is it something that can get done this year is, is my question, or if not, because if not. Unfortunately, Cape and Island Tennis and Track, who has um, gone through the bidding process, mm -hmm. through a national bid process, so it takes away the RFP process, yeah. which speeds things up, um, they are not able to do it this summer. Um, they could do it in May of next year if the tennis team could find an alternative sure. area to go to. Um, but if they can, it would be after the tennis season next year, which... If the, court, the, the courts are in such rough shape, I would be surprised if they'll still be able to be played on next year. But if, if we can't get it done this year, it makes sense to go forward with, to try to do the grant. You might as well try to do the grant um, <laughs> and, and, still, and still move forward with the process so that we can get them under contract and, and get, right. get them nailed down for next year. And that won't hold up the track at all? No, it has nothing. <laughs> I mean, two separate the grant projects. Doesn't, doesn't hold up the track. So That is correct. So if we can't get anybody in for this summer anyways, it makes more sense to do, to go for the grant and then deal with it that way, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Jack? Yeah, I don't know if this is <clears throat> that makes sense. okay or not, but as far as finding other facilities, I would suggest we have a couple indoor facilities, local, reach out to them, see if we can schedule tennis, home tennis matches at those places, or maybe we can do something reciprocal with one of the other towns uh, in the area that, that have tennis courts. Then the question I have for you, Carl, is, you know, four courts, I think it's been discussed a number of times, isn't enough. If, you, if you're going to reclaim all of that, take everything out and start again from scratch, could you move the courts over five or six feet to the, towards the bleach, uh, towards the track, and then dump an extra court on the other, on the far side? I don't know. Well, food for thought. I, I just I, I, I continue to hear I, that they need six. I have looked at it, and if it went straight the way it's, it sits now, we'd be taking up parking spots and possibly blocking the pathway that's there. Um, I, I take I don't know. take, take I don't a look because I I think I just I just we're know to do it. Might as well do it right. Yeah. Yes. But what um, from what I'm hearing from the board though is that we want to go for the grant since we couldn't even get them contracted to do it till next summer anyways. Is that what I'm kind of hearing from mm -hmm. Kim? Go ahead. Is there still a chance that they, what, that we wouldn't get that part of the grant? There oh, yeah. is a, yes. Yeah. There are no mm -hmm. promises according to him. There's no promises that we'll get any money for the tennis courts. It's needs based and, and other, other things that are considered. So if we don't get the grant, do we still do we still have that company coming in May to do the work? We could if we vote on it. It would be May of next year, right? Mm -hmm. right. Not this. Uh, this May's so already done. Now. So. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, First. And that's that's what we're trying to get. Do we want to move forward with try, and, and co get a contract written and signed? Unfortunately, I do have the contract ready for four courts, not for six. Um, it is a four hundred even five. I just whatever it's you a four hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollar um, contract yeah, to get these. Um, they did say if we wanted to get it sooner, we could go with an asphalt court. Right now, we're looking at a post-tension concrete with a twenty-five gar year guarantee not to crack. Um, but you run recent. 
processes have taken every last good bit of stuff out of oil, and what's left is not as good as it was seven to ten years ago, where you could rely on a on a, a paved court to last a long time. They just say they they stopped doing them because they weren't holding up oh, at yeah. all. So that, that's yeah. why they're going to the post tension concrete. It's a waste of money because then we're back here again. So exactly, we're, you'd be back here in we're five better years off or so. To do the, just unfortunately, wait a year and see if we can't find a place which you hate to do, but. And I don't know, I, I, Atkinson only has one court, right? The other court's a pickleball court now, I think. Yes, we're going all pickleball in Atkinson. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, so here's, where are all the courts that you're aware of? Because uh, Well, there are the indoor facilities that I'm talking about. I mean, even where? if you had to drive down to Haverhill or Cedardale. The issue that we run into, because we run into it in the, and again, this is a problem for yeah. later. But the issue that we'll run into is, is that the indoor times are very difficult to secure. Yeah. Right. I was calling people early, early in the year just to get, uh, the girls' tennis team over into some indoor courts, you know, when we thought the weather was going to be lousy. Um, so it'll be a challenge, but we're going to have to figure it out. We'll, you know, I guess the only thing I would, uh, if you don't mind, um, there is no guarantee that we're going to get grant money. No. So when we get to next, they're not even going to answer you until next June. Mm -hmm. And the answer might be yes, it might be no, it might be some. So I just want to make sure people understand that regardless, if we're sitting out a tennis season and we got to kind of figure it out, we'll play all the way matches, whatever we got to do to keep those girls going. But as, as Carl said, we, we kind of want to make sure that at the end of the day, we've got at least four nice courts that – that we're not talking about for a while. Are we able to practice on those, and can it do anything at all to make those uh, safe uh, in, with when I first work, or is it nothing? I'm sorry. When we got here about two years ago, we had, were in the process of filling those cracks with um, what was recommended by the manuf by the manufacturer of the court, and uh, it washed out in less than a year. Justin, and the Andrew, cracks were all back. Just so the board has the full thing, I know you've also been investigating a potential second grant uh, with colleagues uh, over in Dover. So I've Can contacted the Dover athletic director because his tennis coach had received um, a USTA grant for, I think, about $50,000. So I had asked him the other day. I haven't heard from him, so I'll call him again tomorrow. But I wanted to be put in touch with his tennis coach, who is is pretty active in the USTA, just to find out if there's even any more possibility of funding and what would that entail um so i'll remind him tomorrow to you know to get me a contact info we'll we'll do anything we can to to try to you know get any relief that we can but um i'm just concerned that you know as, as you guys said over there that you know the cracks are going to go through another winter they're not going to get smaller and they're not great right now, so I'm just concerned about that. And, and I also realize that the community uses those tennis courts, and that's part of the reason that your, your grant is going to be heard. It has nothing to do with your school. It's much like I've said to people about the track. It's a land and conservation grant. They really don't want to hear about my track team. They don't want to hear about my tennis <laughs> team. They don't want to hear about my phys ed classes. They want to hear about what the community does with it. So as part of the narrative that you have, I'm really focusing on the fact that basically, what is it now, one tennis court in the entire four towns? They're coming here to play tennis. The community is. So that's what I'm pushing in the grant, uh, much like with the track. So. I will say I did some research on the USTA grant as well, and they can loan up to, they can grant up to $100,000. However, COVID hit them really hard, and they've, um, their funding has dwindled quite a bit so it's a, it's a long shot just to want to make sure that you're aware of that jack and then yeah, Kristen. um <clears throat> i think we should encumber the money i think we should carry it over if we get the grant we get the grant if we don't we don't i think we should look into maybe putting in five quits if you're going to do it it's always cheaper to do it all at once than to do it piecemeal um i also was going to bring up the point those courts as it says in our strategic plan we want to be the hub of the world. Angela, you and I sat out the other night and watched the baseball team go out there at 7 o'clock at night. It's great to see our facilities being used by the community and if we really mean what we say about making this the hub and making it the community and bringing everyone together, 
we need to support those types of assets. And, and to do asphalt again would be ridiculous. I mean, just dumb. So um, I'll make, should I make a motion? Can you hold off on that for a second? I, just, I just can. Like, you can make it. <laughs> no, I don't. Like Maria, what do you need, what do we need to do to make the proper motion so that we're doing the right thing here so we can move forward with this? So if you want to move forward, just say that you you want to move forward and authorize the tennis courts to be repaired. Okay. And to seek a grant. And to, to I think we need a second motion at that point to allow Angelo to pursue grants, correct? Are we going to, are you guys? I don't think if we. Because if you're going to move forward for to schedule it now, we, can, we cannot schedule it and then get the grant. We yeah. have to wait for the so grant that's, response in order to start the process. That's what I thought. That's so why I was. So we cannot schedule this now and then get the grant. I specifically asked that question for the grant. Then the problem. And they said you cannot. The problem we run into then is that that money is no longer available after July 1st, right? right? Mm -hmm. So in order for me to encumber the money for that purpose, we, have we will have contract. to have a signed contract with the tennis company. So and then that eliminates any mm -hmm. ability to seek to a grant. get the grant. Right. So either we have to vote and say, yes, fix the courts, or so hold off and roll the dice with a grant. Kim, we're talking about half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. How is this not coming out of the capital improvement? I'm not exactly sure how that works. Well, but the question. This year, we already used all the capital money, but we do have the, on a, we, we do have funds available. If you guys want to utilize them for that, we do have funds available. Where else would it come from? I think this is related to the surplus, correct? Oh, oh, I remember. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I. So we do have the funds. If you guys decide to move forward with it, the only thing is that I will need a, we will need a contract before June first in order for me to encumber those funds for that purpose. Today is June first. I have a contract ready to be signed. June first. June first or July first. Because today's July 1st. I was like, today's okay, June 1st. Like, <laughs> <laughs> before June 30th. Huh? Sorry, I have a contract to present to the lawyers. You are. Not to be signed. Sorry. So, okay. Thank you. So, <laughs> Jack. again, I just go back to we're spending a lot of money on our facilities. Very little of it directly affects the students. Um, I hate to see another couple teams not have the proper stuff. I, and this is just the cost of doing business. And because we're going to do it right this time, Angela, when was the last time we resurfaced the tennis courts? It wasn't too long ago, was it? It's been about ten as, years. As as the companies have said to me, we've been addressing the top, which is really not a long term solution. So right. we've never really gotten underneath where we need to. Right. Um, so. So I mean, we could put that money in a lot of different places, but here it directly affects the kids. It, it eventually will need to get done, and the longer we wait, the more it's going to I mean, what's the price of concrete done in the last two years, Carl? It has gone from 120 to $180 a cubic yard and next in, year in a year and a half. So, Maria, question. With Kim's question about the CIP, if we decided to take money out of the CIP to use it, then what would that affect with the money that's already there for it? Like, what other projects wouldn't be able to be done if we decided to take it out of the CIP? For this year, the, all the money of the CIP for this year is already used. But what? It's all the projects that we're yeah. getting done okay. right now. All right. So if it went with to the CIP, it would have to go to a vote, would it? No. no. <clears throat> or would, no. to next year? No. It, you guys can decide to to move funds from another from savings in other places to cover this. So the money is there. You just I just need you to decide if you want. I, I just feel the, like it's capital, right? Yeah, remember like, the way this came up. We have so much money left over, and we have this huge thing hanging over us that our facilities are falling apart. And I made the suggestion, let's take some of that money now and make it work for us and do it as efficiently and as effective, cost-effectively as possible, things we know we're going to have to do, instead of, you know, no one is going to see that money going back. I just, this, it doesn't have to be the tennis courts, but we decide, well, we started talking about them because it had a direct effect on an entire sport. So, okay. but other than that, we don't see that money. It goes back to the taxpayers, which spread out over four towns is, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but in I won't say inconsequential <coughs> because it is a lot of money, but it's better served, I think, here with the students. Okay. So then we need to make a decision. 
I make. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Jack. Yeah. I make a motion <coughs> to direct Carl to uh, sign a contract with Cape and Island Track and Tennis. <laughs> For the uh, sum that, of, excuse me, yeah. that would be his job yeah, to sign yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, then, Justin, <laughs> listen, I'm sorry. Hey, listen, listen to Maria. She's yeah, telling yeah, you what to say. A motion to approve the to approve the building of the tennis courts for four hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars. All right. I have a motion for, to be constructed next spring. And to be paid from where? Well, to enter into a contract. To, you got all that? Cape and Island. Cape and Island. <laughs> 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 it's back to Sorry, Justin. To I gave him a promotion a contract on this. For Cape and Island. Track and tennis. To, when, when they have availability to fix the tennis courts. When they what? Beforehand. When they have availability. Okay. Just say so much. Using un unencumbered funds or? Un yeah. Do you have to say that? I, I have no, to I request a, a budget funds. transfer, which okay. I will bring that next school board. Okay. So the motion's been made by Jack. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Paul. <laughs> Is there any further discussion on this? Yes. I just want to let you know that I've asked Steve Paradis, our electrician, to look into adding lights down there as well so that we have lights on those courts when, so they can be used later in the evening. As you know, spring and fall, mm -hmm. the hours get shorter, so we're looking at adding lights down there as well. It would be LED, and we have power down there already, so it shouldn't be a hard thing. So, okay, Mark. And, okay, sorry. Would it be possible also to ask, <clears throat> assuming this passes, for them to do an estimate and see whether it was feasible to add that fifth court, which seems to be needed, and there may be an economy of scale. It may not be 20 percent higher than the you know 488 that we're talking about. And then bring it back uh, to the just board. Just an alternate on the contract. I, I will definitely ask ask them to do look at designing a fifth or sixth court down there, right. or both. Kristen's going to have the last comment, and then we're going to vote. Mario, just remind me, what was the surplus total? Well, this, I don't know yet. I the know, but you had it. The was 1.3. 1.3, so mm -hmm. this is, so there's still money to return. Yes. Okay. Okay. And it will be probably okay. more. I mean, it's so hard to know what. But I'm just, that, I, I was just yes. trying to remember the number. So it was 1.3, yeah, so if more. that sticks and this passes, there's still eight. That's going to return it back to the taxpayers, if that's what we, okay. Yeah. okay. Thanks. Motion and a second's been made. No further discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? And abstained. One abstention. So eight, zero, zero one. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Next is background check fee for temporary workers. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, this entire process is just allowing us to kind of move forward uh, with the hiring process through the summertime. These these folks applying for these jobs typically are on the younger side uh, of things. We don't want to create any obstacles or barriers to having them help us out uh, with short-term employment over the summertime. So it's a way for us to get, bring in some young people uh, to do it quickly and uh, to not encumber or encounter them with a fee. Thank you. Shauna, go for it. I we'll make a motion to waive school board policy GBCD to allow for the district to not charge full-time students that apply for temporary work during school breaks the fee for a criminal history records check. I have a motion to have a second. I'll second it. Second by Kristen. Any discussion? Just a quick question. Who Who's does pay the fee then? The school then would. The school the district, district would. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's like, what, $30, $40? It's $48. $48. $48. Per person. Per student. Yeah. Per student, yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? And abstained. Nine zero zero. All right. Next is the transportation contracts. Mm -hmm. Oh, there Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm just getting ahead of myself. Do we have the transportation? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's it. it. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's been a long haul to get here. Yeah. But we're here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so we've we, just securing those two services over the course of next year to, to bring students to and from school. And this is reflective of all the, the changes that we had been hoping for with some of the language. We're, we're satisfied with where Perfect. it stands. Okay. Yeah. I read it and it looked like it, but because <laughs> I've read all of them. But <laughs> I'd say lucky you, but I. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> but you have too. <laughs> is good time. 
So this is one company who's able to provide the special education buses, like the out-of-district placement, as well as the regular in-district. Is that correct, Justin? Say that again. I'm so sorry. this is like one con one company who's going to be able to provide all the busing for like the out-of-placement correct. people. Correct. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. And there's flexibility in going up and down with that based on the need. Mm -hmm. So it's actually pretty safely written, I think. Yeah. That's what we requested to be added. Yeah, Jack. J just uh, for my edification. Do we have more than one bus company this year? Or do we have two? How many? How many do we have? Yeah, Justin or Shauna could answer two? that. Two. Okay, because typically we struggle to. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Just good. makes it more challenging for coordination and yeah. consistency. And mm -hmm. very good. Thank you. Okay. Someone want to make a motion to accept the contracts? Make a motion to accept the. Can do we have to do them separately or together? Because it's the same company. Because it says non-special ed and special ed transportation. Do we need two separate motions? I think you can do one motion. You can do one. Okay, make a motion to accept the contracts for um, the non-special education transportation and special education transportation Contract. that has been presented to the board. Got a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Kim. Is there any further discussion on these contracts? Seeing that there is none, all those in favor? Oppose and abstain. Nine zero zero. All right. So this is next is a position title change. Come on down, Lucy. So in your packet, um, you'll see that at the elementary level, um, we are, are looking to formally change the title in IV. Um, the people in these positions have been working with this title the last two years. Um, we made some switches from 2017 on to improve um, our coaching aspect for teachers in the area of English language arts and so really it's a formality of making sure that we can change um, the titles in the IV system which requires your vote okay let me if you don't no go ahead Jack so are these positions coaches for teachers okay and how many do we have we have five ELA coaches. And they in all the grammar schools or okay. so it's essentially one per building. Um, we've tried a couple different structures with them to see how we can uh, most effectively use their work, but um, we do have one person stationed in every school and then one who travels to support intervention needs. Okay. I I, I guess one of the issues I it's not even an issue I'm trying to get my arms around English is I think it's the most important thing literacy is the most important thing but we have this ongoing daily coaching of teachers does that when does that take place and and does that do those specialists work in conjunction with the teachers with the students okay Yes, uh, and so to just give you a little bit, um, we've shifted to a, a structure called inquiry cycles where a teacher is either looking at data and, and, and making a, a statement or question about that data, right, that they want to dig into a little more. That coach will help provide professional development or resources, will go into the classroom, co-teach, will observe, will model lessons, and, and so they'll... The data is reflective of the student's performance. Okay. Sorry for not being an educator. But no, they're all good I'm questions. Speak. Thank you. Shauna. So thank you for outlining the four areas. So it's coaching, leadership, instruction, and diagnos diagnosis and assessment. So a lot of that has to do with working directly with the teams in their buildings as well as directly with students. And, and the data that we collect, sometimes they're doing um, more intensive screeners for students. Um, and sometimes they're just helping the teacher to analyze the data they have on an ongoing basis or for our benchmarks. Perfect. My only other question is, I'm just confused about ELA instructional coach in infinite visions. So infinite Why is visions. That part of <laughs> infinite visions is because yeah, you knew I got system. that. All the educators are. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. You didn't tell me that the other day. It's Help now me. called school ERP. Okay. Only so known as. Infinite Visions is the system that we need to change the title in. So we need to change that title in that system. I was part of the title. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what is this? So okay. essentially, these people, they're not changing jobs or anything like that. You literally just need a title change for a system. Okay. 
Okay. And it says it aligns better with the bargaining unit they belong to. I, I think that's important that as long as it's Kristen. No, I just want to make a motion because we're spending yep, a lot of time ahead. on a title change. Yeah, I was like, it's, yeah, go. Sorry. <laughs> go. I make a motion to change the title from uh, the position of liter literacy specialist to ELA instructional coaches. Got a motion. Second by Mark. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Opposed? Oh, sorry. <laughs> and abstain. 900. She was there. I was there. And then enrollment update. Uh, so informational in your packet, you'll see I did ask the registrars at each school to go back and look at the time frame between July 1 and the first day of school, looking for how many students enrolled at each grade, how many students withdrew, and then also from the start of school on how many students enrolled and withdrew. Um, it's one year. It's, it's this current year. It's not a, it's not a projection. Um, and you can see pretty clearly that there's no rhyme or reason because it depends on the age of the students who are moving in and out of our towns. Um, but that was requested. I don't know if there's another way we can look at things that would help, better help, but no, thank you. last meeting. Thank you. Have there been any changes to the pressure points? That we've um, been there at. have not been changes to the pressure points. There have been some changes. Um, and we remain with two, or uh, sorry, three grade levels um, that we're really watching closely. And so, do we have a plan for a deadline of when you would need to come to the board hmm. to potentially request another position for a building? Do, or do we have a cutoff here? So given that hiring in practice, vision? we've been coming pretty regularly by the policy. It's not till August, which we've talked about seems really late and mm -hmm. at, right. So um, I don't anticipate in June, early July that we're going to see a lot of changes. It's usually as things happen in July. So we really I, I would throw that back to Right, uh, Justin and Sandy <coughs> and the board. I will bring back those updates again um, next time, but I can tell you we're still in that same place. We have not met capacity anywhere, but we're close in quite a few places. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So the next thing that we have to do is to look at the data governance plan. This plan is brought before the board yearly for reaffirmation. Um, do you have any more information on this or what this is? I don't. Ken, Ken will have oh, a little bit for, go for you. It. Yeah, this is the yearly update as you were referring to. Um, by RSA, this is brought to the board every year um, to review any changes. Um, this is a year we did not make any changes, so we're just asking to reaffirm that. Um, traditionally, we've put on there a first reading for the, the first meeting in June, and that's really for, I, I think, new board members to be able to that opportunity to review it and come back for the next meeting and ask any questions. Um, take any questions now of course it's uh, it's really the, the document refers to the the management of data confidential data the life cycle of it, it it's really uh, it reads like a toaster manual uh, toaster. <laughs> it's uh, it's very dry there's a lot of data there's, I'm sorry there's a lot of information there though it talks about password policies the security of our um, controls um, virus protection inventory management it's all in there um, okay. plans on if there was a data breach what we would do in that circumstance so there's a lot of information in there I find it very helpful it, we post it on the website so again we'll give you an opportunity to take it um, back with you review it come back with any questions you have uh, for the next meeting I'll be back I'll be back okay so could I get a motion for to accept this as a first read then so moved, so moved by Shauna do I have second. a second second by Kristen um, any discussion at this point like what he said that we could review this and he'll come back at our next meeting to answer any questions Don you'll think no, I'm going to ask you'll wait no, I, mean, I, I have some <laughs> questions but they're more like what can we do to make that easier for teachers to know so they know where their risks are yeah and there's um, there's some training we do around that and the biggest risk um, it's a good question and it's really the the biggest risk we have is with um, users having their accounts compromised right and mm -hmm. the number one reason for that now is phishing attacks which is 
fake websites. They're asking you for banking information. This is very well known out there. It was pretty um, good. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> we did some, yeah. You know, like, we had three wood worse at one time, and we may have bagged two of them when we did some fire. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say who. But, but, was, uh, <laughs> That's a good question. Compromised, um, but anyway, it's um, it's you may have heard of. Uh, I think it was Nashua was in the news recently, yeah. and they, mm -hmm. they they almost had to shut down school for for a week because yeah. their systems were compromised, and there was a bunch of ransomware. And the reason that that happened was phishing attacks. Um, people that had elevated privileges had their accounts um, compromised, and uh, bad actors hacked in and you know brought their systems down. So that's it's a good question. We provide training yearly for that. Mm -hmm. for our staff where they um, they watch um, videos with assessments after on what the latest trends are in um, hackery um, <laughs> so it's yeah it's, it's a good question it's it's something we take uh, very seriously okay thank you well there's been a motion and a second is there any further discussion <laughs> it's a good question though all right all those in favor Opposed and abstain nine zero zero all right and then there's another one the technology plan correct yes and this is the five-year um, technology plan. It just, um, the previous five years ended uh, last year. So bringing a new five-year plan to the board. Um, in the past, this was actually required by the DOE that we would have to file it with the state and the state would review it and then approve it. Mm -hmm. um, the state does not do that anymore. They don't really have the staff up there to do that in the, the technology area anyway. Um, but I think it's very important for the district to have this plan in place. It's really a strategic plan for technology, if you will. Uh, there's goals outlined in there for various aspects of uh, technology in the district with curriculum integration, access to technology, um, community communications, and most important to me is the projected cost for the next five years on um, some of the items. So the board reviews this. Um, again, we'll treat this as a first read, give you a chance to take it back, review it, come back with any uh, questions. There's goals okay. that are outlined for each section. Um, the projected costs are kind of like the board kind of signed it off on us progressing that in that direction with those purchases for the next five years. Okay. So again, we can come back in a couple of weeks, answer any questions, or I'll take any questions now, of course. Okay. Bree? Um, I was just wondering for the classroom projectors where every student has their own laptop or Chromebook, something like that. You're working off Google Classroom yep. where basically everyone has the visualization or could have it in front of them. Are you seeing um, teachers utilize the projectors as they once did? Yeah, all the time, actually. Yeah, it's it's still a very common tool we find in the classrooms. And uh, I don't know if Sandy or Mark could speak, Sandy could speak more to that maybe. But in, the, in the classrooms, they're always projecting. And those the, the problem we had with the older projectors, uh, you know, a couple of years ago was that they were bulb, low definition. And I would go into classrooms, and I would have trouble seeing them in the back. So I imagine students had some issues as well. So we upgraded those the, to high definition. The newer ones are laser, which don't use bulbs. Um, the bulbs burn out. They're very expensive to replace. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I guess a long way to answer is, yeah, they use it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for videos, um, you know, to put the agenda up for the day for the class. Um, yeah, they're constantly using them. I I didn't read through this whole thing. I will. Um, do we use any servers here, or is this all cloud-based? We, we've been, um, the last five years, we made a significant um, effort to reduce servers in the district and move to cloud-based. All of our major systems are cloud-based now. And um, we used to have a lot of servers here at the SAU and each one of the schools. We really only use servers now for um, logging in. So we have like a Windows Active Directory domain that people log into. Um, the servers in those buildings service to authenticate people. And then there's a very small footprint now with fi old file storage that um, we store on Windows servers. Um, but most of it's Google now, um, especially w during COVID times, to be able to access those from anywhere. We moved a lot of that storage to Google. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Shauna? Make a motion to accept the technology plan for our first read. Second it. Mm -hmm. Motion by Shauna, second by Kristen. Um, and again, you'll be back at our next meeting to answer any other questions. But any further discussion at this time? All those in favor? Opposed? And abstain. Nine zero zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Next is strategic plan. We need to be approving this for a second read, correct? If there's the possibility to do that. Um, okay. 
I'd like to, as a point of order, yeah. can, I would recommend that we do this in, a, in the form of a workshop as part of a, uh, part of a workshop, just because I have a bunch of questions, I have a few issues, and I know we are pressed for time tonight, we have a lot of stuff, and I just feel like we can give this the due diligence that it deserves in the form of a workshop in a little bit more relaxed atmosphere, if you will, uh, and, and we can, you know, everyone can ask questions and we're not pressed for time and rushing through something. So. I would, that would be my recommendation to the chair. Hey. Justin, did you want to? So once this becomes second read, does it become like it's, like once we approve yeah. this for second read, does it, or what's the next step after that? The, the next step, it would be, it, adopted. it would be adopted yeah. okay. and we would move forward with that. So if we want more discussion, if we want more feedback, if we want more edits and revisions, then. I just think sometimes we, we due to the limited time and a full agenda and all the time you guys put in, I have always found workshops to be productive um so that's that's a suggestion but i'm only one person that okay what's to do things perfect <laughs> anybody else have any other comments about this i begrudgingly find myself agreeing with jack <laughs> <laughs> and i this is just ignorance on my part uh workshops like well, how's that work is it like is that, does the entire school board is it like a, do we come together on a, a time and place and go through this and ask our questions and how does that what's the structure of that yeah we we Good do that question. a lot with budget committees in other words like you do one workshop because when everyone's collaborating in a yeah. room together so it's a post <laughs> meeting um it doesn't it, it, you still need to have a quorum but it's it's just set up as a as a workshop that's all not a formal school board yeah. meeting. I think you need a quorum do you so. No, because it would come it's back. To, it would come back, back to the full it board. It comes back to the full board after sure. anyway, yeah. so you don't right. need a quorum. You don't yeah. need a quorum, but the way that it would most likely happen is there's two current board members who sit on strategic planning committee, um, and what they could do is organize a workshop, and they could invite members of the board to participate in any level that they wanted to, whether that was electronically, in person. Um, but that would be my recommendation in terms of how to move forward with the actual physical process of setting up time. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a it's a large document that probably needs its time, so. Yeah, you get your meeting. Well, it's a different meeting that, I that know, I know. Know. <laughs> just to give everyone an overview I'd... about yeah, how to introduce ahead. it. This is a product of, you know, about more than 15 people working uh, across a year uh, to develop a document that has gone through some cycles of feedback. Um, that committee is large. Um, and uh, what Sandy and I have talked about is wanting to revise the committee and strategically, no pun, select some, some staff uh, and board to participate on that, but we need to move from a process of development of the plan to implementation and monitoring of the plan. Uh, so that's the next stage, about once it's adopted, there should be some smaller group that is going to be reporting on implementation progress over the course of time. And, and that's the direction that we would elect to go. And that's the meeting that I think that, uh, that one of us is, is eager to get to. <laughs> so it's your recommendation to go ahead and approve this so you guys can move on to the next step. Is that what I'm hearing from you? That would be great, but I also just also want to point out whether it's approved or not tonight, it's a malleable document. So it, it can change and, 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 and adjust and flex at any moment that we want to bring back to the board and make major changes. Anything you set in stone tonight um, does not does not put an obstacle in the way to get back to it if that group I'm actually No, you're not married to it. I'm actually gonna use this tonight in one of my talking points to say but once we have it, someone can say, we have it in our strategic plan. We must do it. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that it's right. And like I said, I don't, it would be time consuming for me to, to address a couple of the issues tonight is my guess. No. We took 45 minutes for a fight. <laughs> I think this could be. Can you that are on the strategic <laughs> committee and get your answers individually? All right. If we're going to That's approve something, idea. if we're going to approve something, we should I'll be in agree. I mean, look, you can all agree to approve it tonight. I'll just vote no. That's mm -hmm. that's the way this. Well, works. like what Justin said, we're not married to this. So even if we do go ahead and approve this as a second read, we can come back and amend this. So, but we need to. We do need to make a decision. Do we want to go ahead and approve this for second read, or do we want to wait and see what the strategic plan committee and see, but at our next board meeting and see what that decision is. But we need to. Move are the forward. folks that are on strategic planning willing to host a workshop? Mm -hmm. Why are you looking at me? I haven't had a meeting yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. I just, um, Go in ahead. my opinion, I absolutely hear you out and there was a first read for this very purpose. That's how we get to a second read. And then you're kind of mitigating or minimizing, I guess, 
15 people's work over the past not year. A, not at all. Uh, not hold at on, all. hold on. <laughs> Recontinue. <clears throat> so um, I kind of agree, maybe, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the strategic plan, that would be helpful. Does ever, anyone else, I guess, here have been over this document to offer multiple um, discussions? Martin? I have been over it, uh, and one one of the benefits, well, of having a group discussion is is more often than I would like. My perspective or my opinion changes when I hear somebody else's input. I have no idea what will what Jack or anybody else will say about particular items. Though it's a time commitment, I I would personally find it beneficial to hear uh, <coughs> an opinion that was not my own to be able to weigh it. So I. If that's the case, I would like that workshop to take place before the next June 15th, 14th, I don't know, meeting, yeah, I, I would so that we that, can move yeah. on the strategic plan. The, that would be my recommendation. Yeah. The other okay. question I, I have, did we do the first read as this board, or did the last board? This board. This board. It was this board. board. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, right. mm -hmm. yep, because Brie actually, she... Okay. Got it. She had listed, and we actually, she went with Justin and met it with him. It becomes a blur question. after a while. As you I can, understand. You can appreciate it. Okay. And then I just have a grammatical error on personal goal number five. Okay. Task one, it says identity when it probably means identify. Uh-oh. <laughs> Mark, she's putting you to shame with the grammar. <laughs> okay. So it sounds like, Jack, you need to go ahead, Kristen, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, since Bree brought that, I know we also talked about some of the photos. There were duplicates and they were going to be changed and, mm -hmm. and whatever. That's still, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, that's minor, but. It was something the last time we were here. Okay, so I guess it sounds like that you guys will have. Like we're gonna have a workshop. You're gonna have a workshop before That's the June fifteenth. The will 15th. of the board. You know, if we can incorporate other things after. You know, if there's something else, some a member or the group. Well, let's this. keep this workshop just to the strategic okay, plan, and then fine. we'll do other workshops for other things. Right. So, so that seems to be the will of the board. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Table this to next time. All right. And Got some policy. Sure it gets on the agenda for next time. Please. Yes, we'll just yeah make a note to put it on the agenda for next time. I want to make notes for sure. All right. So, yes, we have yeah two. Yes, two policies up for a second read. Which one is GBCE, which is training and information relative to child sexual abuse prevention, and the other one is IJOC, which is in regards to volunteers. Um, the first one just, again, was recommendations for new policy recommended by the New Hampshire School Board Association, and the second word was added volunteer termination and limited access to certain spaces. I'll make a motion to accept um, <laughs> Paul, I, it, my thing won't scroll. There we you go. Push policy the GB, I am. Oh. <laughs> GB, C, E, and IJOC for second read and adoption. I'll second. Motion by Shauna, second by Kim. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? And abstain. Nine zero zero. All right. I believe. Administration, administration report. report. Yep. Go. Uh, got uh, three things. Uh, one of them is really awesome. I'm gonna. I'll save it to the end. Uh, but we are excited to uh, begin uh, negotiating with the TTA. Uh, both parties are looking for early June. Uh, we're assembling our team now at the district level. Uh, we're looking to set that first meeting for ground rolls in early June and to do a lot uh, of that heavy lifting over the summertime uh, and at least get to a sense of, of a good place before staff and students come back into the building. So we'll keep you abreast of that over the summer months. Uh, second, we did get the Bright Futures uh, survey results. Those have been, have been released uh, both at the state and, and local levels. Um, so we have our, our data. We're going to uh, spend some time looking at it. To give you kind of a rough es es estimate, we had 65 staff uh, that participated in that survey, and we had 159 uh, members of the community participate. So th that's going to be our sample size, and we'll kind of be looking at their feedback and discussing it internally here as a team. Uh, lastly, I want to recognize uh, 13 uh, high school students that are receiving the Excellence in Academics Awards, uh, and I'll do that by name. And I'd also like just to mention uh, the college or university or post-secondary uh, place that they'll be moving to uh, in the future. Uh, the first is Jacqueline Fuller. Um, they will be going to the University of New Hampshire and majoring in music education. 
Second is Lauren Genest. They will also be going to the University of New Hampshire and majoring in occupational therapy. Anna Hammer, Hammer will be going to Wheaton College, and her major will be biology and pre-med. Vanessa Hawks will be going to the University of New Hampshire in the Honors College, and she will be uh, participating in the nursing program. Allison Henderson will be attending Trinity College, uh, and she is currently undecided. Alex, uh, Alexis Hornsby will be going to New England College, and her field will be, again, biology or pre-med. Mary Lamar will be going to Bentley University, and she will be studying management. Ella Murray is undecided, and she will be going to the College of Holy Cross. Isabella Fair will be attending Hartford University and the Hartford School of Music, and she will be studying drama and musical theater. Emma Richard will be going to St. Anselm's College, and she'll be studying nursing. Abigail Short will be going to Sacred Heart University and majoring in occupational therapy. Amelia Steele will be attending the University of New Hampshire, and she'll be majoring in bio biochemistry. And lastly, Thomas Young uh, will be attending Champlain College and majoring in accounting. Uh, this is a prestigious award, uh, and again, uh, all commendations and, and uh, really good props to all those students, and we wish them well in their uh, fields of study as they move forward. Yes, congratulations. That was all three? That was all that was three? just two. No, that was three. Sorry. No, that was three. <laughs> Sandy, did you have anything? Uh, I do not this okay. evening, no. All right. right. So the next thing is our personnel report. And now, do we just need to read these in, or do we actually have to make a motion, Fran? Uh, well, the first one is just have to make a motion because it's brand new. It's June 1st. Okay. Make a motion to accept the professional nomination of Shauna Stewart, special education teacher at Pollard Elementary School, and Alyssa Grant, elementary teacher at Atkinson Academy. The motion to have a second? Second. Second by Jack. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? And abstain? 9 0 0. Make a motion to uh, accept the professional resignations of Darcy Millitello, first grade teacher at Danville Elementary School, Holly Costa, school counselor at Timberlane Middle School, Catherine Bruce, enrichment teacher at Sandown North, Ashley Conway, fourth grade teacher at Pollard Elementary School and Matthew McCabe, social studies teacher at Timberlane Middle School, and thank you all for your time and dedication to our students. Thank you. A motion to have a second? Second. Second by Mark. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? And abstain. Nine zero zero. Okay. Um, next, we have a vacancy report. So I, the one that was attached to your packet was probably done last week, so I do, do, I, I do have an updated one. You guys can just pop it around if you like. Um, just to let you know, we have about 40 um, professional staff positions that are currently open. Uh, we have about 82 total positions open district-wide, including powers and custodians, maintenance, and so forth. Um, the good news is, since May, we've hired 16 new, new staff, so that's okay. always positive, so that's exciting. We're happy to have that. Um, one of the things, is it, do you have it? Is it okay? They're different. No, I think, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. um, one of the um, things that we tr we're trying to do is um, sending out exit interviews a lot quicker to try to figure out um, why people are leaving a little, a little bit faster than normal. So we, not that it's, I think it, we know the reasons in most cases, but it's always good to have some information. You know, some of it's obviously retirement, and we have some people <clears throat> relocating. Um, salary still seems to be a big issue for people leaving. Um, but anyway, so some of that, we'll be getting that information to you in a summary, probably at the next board meeting, but I did want to let you know that we are collecting that. We usually collect it anyway, but we're just trying to get it a little quicker now than we had in the past. Great, um, thank you. Thank yeah, you. you're welcome. So I don't know if you guys have any other questions, but. Does anybody have any questions for Fran due to vacancy or anything like that? Okay, thank All right, you. thank you. Thank you, Fran. Now, we need to enter into record the ones that were electronically approved. Go for it, Shauna. Yeah, go ahead, Shauna. Okay. So um, just, just read them, though. Just, we don't have to make a motion. On May 22nd, oh, um, 2023, electronically approved professional nomination for Molly McAlpine, grade one at Sandown North Elementary, and Taylor Santi, grade three at Sandown North Elementary, as well as the professional resignation of Samantha Platt, elementary school teacher at Atkinson Academy. I think there's another one. I think there's two. Button. Button. Just hit your tabs. I am. <laughs> it doesn't work. Mine's very slow. So sorry. Um, on May 25th, 
mm -hmm. um, electronically approved professional nominations for Anna Bars, um, sixth grade science teacher at Timberland Regional Middle School, and Mark Hannock, science teacher at Timberland Regional High School, as well as the professional renomination of Amanda Mulhall, special education teacher at Timberland Regional Middle School, and the professional resignations of Erin Del Russo, third grade teacher at Pollard. Justin Bentley Mele, technology teacher at Sandown North. Courtney Pellegrino, interventionist at Sandown Central School, and Elizabeth Collard, science teacher at Timberline Middle School. Thank you, Shauna. I think that's all the reports. Yes. All right, I'm going to start on this side for uh, committee reports. Bree? <clears throat> Strategic planning is going to have a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Anything else, ma'am? Uh, no. All right. Kim? I don't have any. Mark? You're going to do a jock, you want me to. It's Mark, you, you'll do a better job than me, and you'll be shorter. Uh, CIP met. We went through uh, a litany, pages and pages of improvements for capital improvement and readjusted some of them based on some unencumbered funds, trying to prioritize some of these improvements that uh, were more timely or time essential, things that if they were delayed too long may actually uh, generate greater costs for us to fix in the future. We made the recommendations uh, in consultation with Carl and we'll be bringing them in front of the board for, you know, the thumbs up or thumbs down. On the 23-24. On the 23-24 here, yes. <laughs> but that shifted everything else. I didn't want to get into those yeah. specifics. But. Anything else, Mark? No, ma'am. Thank you. Shauna? Nothing. Uh, policy met right before this. Um, we were talking about a lot of good stuff. Um, we'll have some things that will be coming to the board probably the next meeting, correct? 15. Yep. Uh, safety, we do not meet again until June 20th. I don't have anything else. I don't have anything. Okay. Jack? Yeah. Well, no. Nothing as far as committee reports. Ooh. No. Nothing. Paul, anything? Nothing. All right. Katie? Yes, sorry. Our CNA meetings are usually the first Tuesday of every month, but it's going to be the second Tuesday, the 13th okay. of June. Of June? Yes. Okay. Actually, a bit of good news. Okay. Well, this is, you know what? Prelim this is other business. No, so this ahead. is another business, but, but it can be. <laughs> uh, pre preliminarily, my understanding is that the pipe coming oh, yeah. out of the boiler is fine and will not have to be replaced. Um, but I'll let Carl talk about that. They dug the test hole, they checked it out, and they think it was just where two pipes kind of came together. So great. that's that's good news. Yes, thank you. Short and sweet. I like it. <laughs> the way you like it. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any other business? I, I, I go ahead. <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to the Timberland Varsity softball girls who are moving into the quarterfinal rounds after beating the ball yesterday. Nice. All right, Jeff. Okay, so I'm going to recommend that we have a guest speaker in here. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with her last year. I gave her two brand new lab Adore Puppies. It's a company, or should I say it's an organization called Hero Pups. It's an all-volunteer organization. They do therapy dogs. They're in a lot of schools in the state of New Hampshire. They do things for veterans. She, this lady who started the organization did because her son was killed in Afghanistan. The mm -hmm. story is incredible. I'll let her tell it. But she's spoke before Congress. Mm -hmm. I believe we've had therapy dogs in and around uh, some of our students, and the feedback I've gotten is great. But I'd like to come in here because I will be donating two more puppies probably around October. Um, so. Those may not be if we decide we want to move forward with some type of program like that. It may not be one of those dogs because they find the best dog for that. Yeah. So sure. I'll let her talk about it, but if you could put her on the agenda at some point in time, I'll give you the contact information. Yeah, just email me all the stuff and that, then we'll see. If, yep. And mm -hmm. if anyone wants to go online and see what they do, it's yeah. it's a pretty incredible story. Sounds like it. Yeah. So, all right, thanks. Any other business? Okay, we will be entering into a non-public. Did you look up at me? What it is. I never. <coughs> yeah. I assume we're going in on. I know we're going on. I'm going to make a motion to go into non public under 91 A colon 3 2 subsection C. Is there another subsection we need to go in under? Or is that. I don't think so. No. Just C. Okay. Got a motion to have a second. I'll second that. Second by Jack. It's my pleasure to second this one. Would you please take the vote? <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Um, Paula Cave. 
Donald yes. Woodward. Yep. Jack Sapia. Yes. Um, Kristen Savage. Yes. Katie Knudsen. Yes. John Amanda. Yes. Mark Sherwood. Yes. Kristen McCormick. Yes. And Bree Woodward. Yes. yes. <laughs> Kim McCormick, but yes. <laughs> what? You You're said close. Kristen yeah. McCormick. You're, You're close. close. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We will not be back. Um, have a good evening.